Well, the media hardly acquitted themselves well with their coverage of last night's bombing in Manchester. Okay, we're in an understatement. It was awful. First of all, it took them a long time to shut up about Russia and actually cover it. Fox began covering the attack at 6.48 p.m. Eastern. The other two cable networks, not so much. At 7, we began covering Manchester exclusively. The other networks, still leading with Russia. Chris Matthews even moved back to Russia where you could hear people screaming in the background. Surely after a half hour, things had changed. Wrong. At 7.30, you guessed it, still on Russia. At 7.36, they still weren't covering Manchester like it was a gruesome attack. We knew it was by then, but you wouldn't know it by watching those channels. When the other media did start covering it, things weren't necessarily better. Over at CNN, analyst Paul Cruikshank took time to speculate the suicide bombing could have been a false flag by right-wingers, of course, apparently so committed to making Islam look bad, they're willing to kill themselves to do it. That's commitment, but you know the right, they're committed. Over at ABC, Martha Raddatz commented that Manchester was a surprising target because, we're quoting now, Manchester did not vote in favor of Brexit, as if the attack would be more understandable if the city had voted for Brexit. Not impressive. Joe Concha writes about the media for The Hill, and he joins us tonight. Joe, did you watch it last night? What did you think? I have a fortress of solitude down in my basement, Tucker, that allows me to watch four TVs at once. It's on Twitter. You can see pictures of it. So I'm able to watch <laughs> you CNN. You poor man. Yeah, it's more for fantasy football, but also for my job as well. And look, there are some numbers around this that are just stunning. 105 minutes during the 7 p.m. hour, this is according to an MRC study, was spent on Trump and Russia on CNN and MSNBC. Just 50 minutes on an attack, grotesque as you says, in the city of a western ally where women and children, young girls going to a concert are killed, any community access producer or manager would know in that situation that once this story broke at 648, it is full stop. There is no other story to cover. But this just shows you that it's media malfeasance marinated in myopia. Alliteration aside, this is what happens now when you're so locked into one story that you miss a story like this where everything should have gone away and this should have been the only thing that was covered. Look, I mean, you know exactly, I've been doing this a long time, you've been covering it a long time, you know exactly what happened. Their formula is working. Their viewers think that Donald Trump is a marionette controlled by Vladimir Putin. They think this because they're being told it by the anchors over there who are spinning these incredibly complex and insane conspiracy theories. And they're getting good numbers by doing that. And so they don't even, even a terror attack won't get them off it because they're completely addicted to the drug of ratings. I mean, that's what it is. It's not only what journalism looks like in 2017, Tucker, it's what it sounds like, and more importantly, it's what it smells like, and it sticks to your boots. Look, I agree with you that it's good for business, but if you look at the numbers last night, at 9 o'clock, for instance, uh, Fox, Shepard Smith uh, nearly doubled Rachel Maddow and what's called the key demographic that advertisers co uh, covet most. So, look, people are, they want their news. And I remember CNN, when I was growing up, it was the only game in town. Fox and MSNBC didn't come around until 1996. And I forget who said it, but somebody compared it to a spare tire that you could always count on it to be there when you needed it. And last night, I couldn't find my spare tire. I could not believe that I kept seeing Brady Bunch panels on Donald Trump and Russia when they should have been covering the story. And it just goes back to CNN and recent studies lately, Tucker, just shows you just how locked in they are on this topic. May 12th, another MRC study, 96 guests on that day were anti-Trump, just seven pro-Trump. That's a 13 to 1 ratio. I mean, that's well, but, incredible. I mean, but by the way, there's other news that's not Trump related. Like, if you're a news channel, you should be bringing the news. It's not all about Donald Trump and Michael Flynn. I was talking to a friend of mine today who's actually not particularly pro Trump. I think he mm -hmm. voted against Trump. But he's watching the coverage and he's saying, you know, there's nothing you could say that they wouldn't believe about Trump. Do you think if you went on to another channel and said, you know what, I have evidence? that Trump drinks human blood, just like a shot glass of it every morning when he wakes up. Do you think anybody would say, no, I don't, you know, that's just, you know, show me the evidence. They'd all like sort of nod in bovine agreement, like, yeah, of course he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, the, and the, <laughs> the narrative gets fueled by anonymous sources being used uh, in every story that we see from the New York Times and no. Washington Post. And look, the, the New York Times has something called a style guide. And in it, one rule, and it's supposed to be used, and now it's the last rule, unfortunately, that anonymity 
uh, should be the last resort. But now yeah. it's become the first resort, and that's what's fueling all of these stories because it's not a matter of being accurate. It's a matter of being first, and it's a matter of being uh, more about quantity than quality, and that's what journalism is in 2017, unfortunately. It's, it's good for business, but it's bad for integrity. No, Parker. it's bad. I mean, I've, I have a lot of friends over at all these places. You know, nice people. I'll never believe anything they say ever again, ever, under, about anything because they're liars, and it's sad. Joe, thanks for joining us. Thank you.